Hi everyone, Alan Schimmel here with DevOps.com's DevOps TV at DevOps Enterprise Summit 2016 in San Francisco. That's a lot of DevOps right there. Yeah. Uh, happy to be joined with two people who just recently came off the main stage here at DevOps Enterprise Summit. Uh, Erica Morrison and Scott Pru of CSG International. CSG International. And Scott, why don't you tell our audience a little bit, maybe they're not familiar with CSG sure. International. Sure, CSG is, we run a large uh, SaaS based billion customer care platform for the cable industry. Mm -hmm. Been doing it for over 20 years. Um, we've got about 50 million subscribers. Wow. Uh, large uh, infrastructure, we support uh, major cable companies like Comcast, Time Warner, Charter. Um, if you use service from one of those customers, you use our software. Really? Or yeah, touch it at least in some, yeah. in some regard. Fantastic. And um, and guys, you presented on, on CSG's own DevOps transformation here at, uh, at the summit. Correct. Correct. And why don't you give our audience a little background? You didn't do a DevOps transformation just to be the cool kids on the block, mm -hmm. right? What what kind of, what were the driving forces behind why, you, why, what, you know, what was, what wasn't working? Sure. I mean, o overall, really quality and speed are the two things that we've, you know, been trying to enable. We've gone through several years of getting more agile and lean development in place, and we finally hit a point where we realized that not having kind of the operational concerns integrated in with the the really kind of the development and kind of build run teams was continuing to de-optimize uh, things in the system. So, Erica, let me ask you. Scott said, at you know, quality and speed. Was it quality? Was it something noticeable to your customers demanding it? Was it the development team outpacing ops, ops outpacing development? What what exactly about quality and speed do you think? So yeah, our, our customers definitely demand better and better quality out of us, and we've had an issue over the last several years focusing on quality of our releases, where we've reduced our batch size and we've drastically reduced the impact to our customer with those. Um, but we've seen that with the, the off-release activities that we still need to improve the quality there, and so mm -hmm. we've been attacking some of that. And I think that that gets felt both within the operations teams that support those and then on the, the customer side. Great. and. So in looking at it, why DevOps? Was that an obvious solution here, you think? or? Well, I think some of the, the principles of DevOps, of really understanding the whole value chain, were one of the things that we continue to hypothesize were actually, you know, really that lack of that understanding was kind of creating these de-optimizations and creating a lot of the, the risk and problems in the system. So development teams didn't really understand how their software would actually run in production and be consumed by the customer and didn't really see a lot of the pieces of the operational impact. So basically kind of bringing those together, now the team really kind of understands that whole delivery pipeline, everything from how I build it to basically how I run it, and then they continually can get feedback on a day-to-day -day basis that says, let's improve not just the features, but the operational quality of basically how the software runs. Fantastic. And um, so now, you know, the choice was made to do this, and these are the reasons behind, us, behind it. Can you give us, Eric Orska, sort of how did you go about implementing this, this transformation? It's, re it's really been, it's been a several year journey. I think the, the focus of the talk this year was really, we, we made a, m a major leap in this year where we actually combined our development and operations teams we into did. one. Uh, and, and they were even through separate orgs. And now not only do we bring those orgs together, but each team basically we're adding an extension to, extension to the Agile teams where wow. we're adding that operations engineer to those Agile teams so that they're embedded on the teams and everyone is functioning together. And you know, we've got one Kanban, one stand up, one planning, et cetera. That's great. Um, in terms of kind of the, you know, the, f the, the organizational change that you mentioned, I mean, this is a big thing to bring two teams together like that, that were two separate. What kind of support from up, up above did you need to, to make that happen? Well, I mean, we did have execu executive leadership support to really go through this. Uh, with those types of changes, when you're bringing together those two separate orgs, you really kind of have to. Uh, so our leaders really kind of looked at you know some of the problems, the kind of continued issues that we had, and came to the conclusion you know with at least some of the data that we presented them and some of the things that were occurring that it was really kind of best to bring those teams. So they really supported us in that. And then at the time it was basically March when we when we went through this. Uh, I then brought you know those the leaders from the different groups together and really challenged them to say how do we restructure to basically create teams that own the delivery chain. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of went through those changes back in March to really kind of put that in place. 
Got it. And um, if you feel comfortable, can you share with our audience maybe some of the metrics that you're using to measure the success of, of your transformation and, and what those are? Sure. So, so, so we got a, about a, got a bunch. So just to, just to be straight up, we're about seven months into this. Okay. We have not actually seen a change in the metrics in, in, in essence. We haven't basically seen like things just dramatically improve. Uh, there's a lot of signs. You know, we do see less escalated incidents, but overall, if you actually looked at our, our metrics from incidents and change, they, they're, they're not showing remarkably better yet. Um, I think about seven months in, we've kind of gotten through really the teams, you know, uh, through the team storming mm -hmm. and starting to form and actually now start to target actually improvements. I think if you if you went and kind of talked to teams, I think the general, you know, we, the general morale is better. Our customers actually perceive the quality to be better. Um, do. When you yes, when you do look at the metrics, you don't see a dramatic change. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't. Y whereas in when we optimize the release and software development quality, after about a year and a half of doing that, we saw uh, about a six to seven x improvement in the quality, and we eventually hit about a ten x improvement. We just haven't hit that in our maturity yet. So I think next year, probably this time, we'll we'll have some good results to actually show in our metrics that we've seen we've seen market improvements. And my boss had an analogy that I like, and he said it's like it's like a football team where the coach is seeing great stuff at practice, the scoreboard's just not reflecting it. I think yep. to Scott's point, we're all feeling like things are have turned the corner, um, and we're starting to get there. I mean, but I, not to down, and I'm a football coach myself, so not to downgrade what the scoreboard says, because at the end of the day, that is the scoreboard. Yep. But you know, morale. If the team feels they're doing better. Yep. And you're having good practices and, and things are happening to your point, Erica. I mean that to me is the precursor to these things. Sometimes it, it's as important. And we're, as we're making good progress on a lot of the strategic efforts that are yeah. going to show in those metrics very soon. Yeah, I mean the t the teams now have really kind of empathy, you know, as a as a group. They have, you know, what what we call esprit de corps, really, that that shared mission yep. now to basically both build the software and run it and make it easy to use and satisfy the customer. So they all share that vision, and um, that's that's big. And now they're starting to put the engineering, the tools, and the other practices in place that previously kind of lacked in, in some of these areas. And those are are now just starting to kind of show the improvement. You know, a lot of what Eric has done with automating, you know, things that before that were high risk and manual making it repeatable, getting the version control, those are all things that, that we know will yield huge benefits later. Very cool, very cool. Scott and Eric, I'd, I'd like to can check in with you in another seven months. Oh yeah. And see where this is, if it's okay, because yep. these are the kinds of transformation stories that I think really have made DevOps Enterprise some of the success. I was talking to someone in the video before this, it's kind of like binge watching on Netflix, right? You finish season one and now, Season two is here, and you want to find out where everything that's happened since season one. So we'd love to check in and, and see how season two goes with you guys. Um, but until then, lots of success. I, I hope you're documenting all of this so we can yep, try and hard. share along. Keep track Maybe, of all it. Yeah, well, you know, this is how people learn, though. Yeah. Right? They, they learn from your experiences, and you learn from their experiences, and hopefully it accelerates the whole process. Anyway, thank you for uh, appearing with us today on DevOps. DevOps.com's DevOps TV and for presenting at DevOps Enterprise Summit. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon. Right. Thanks for having me. Erica Morrison, Scott Pru, CG. CSG. CSG. All right, I keep thinking CGI. CSG International here at DevOps Enterprise Summit. This is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com's DevOps TV.